Hello, uh, this is Jerry Morris. Thanks for joining me. I'm doing this while I'm on vacation in the jungles of Barbados, so forgive the lighting. I thought you'd rather see the jungle than me. Um, what I'm going to do today is uh, we're not going to go over a new case. We have uh, uh, approximately eight or nine cases that I've brought to video. Uh, some of those have developed and I thought I'd review the results uh, uh, as a, a way of sort of bringing us up to speed on some ones that have developed. Uh, the first is Kelsey Barreth. Um, I'd indicated early on that um, uh, Patrick was not the fiance. Um, I mentioned that they had no relationship at all uh, during the, the, at the time of, uh, of Kelsey's disappearance and um, <clears throat> later on it did come out that they had they were no longer an item and the only time they had any communication was uh, with uh, Patrick's visitation with with the baby um, also I named Patrick as the murderer uh, which was apparently correct or seems to be correct I also indicated that the crime occurred um, at her house and apparently that is correct also based on what uh, the latest police report and I also mentioned an accomplice so um, it's interesting I've gotten some t tremendous feedback from people in Colorado um, uh, the accomplice I described as uh, driving a, a tan uh, suburban with Florida license plates and I have uh, an, uh, two people that have been cited in Colorado driving tan suburbans with Florida license plates those are going to the police um, if you look at it logically if I'd come from Florida to do a crime I would be back in Florida right now but you know we'll we'll work on on that one so I feel good about the, the Casey Barrett case it's moving along um, I am working on the location of, uh, uh, of her and um, <clears throat> uh, the police have uh, contacted and working with waste management so I'm assuming that uh, they think the body has been dumped um, but um, I also have some ideas that I'm going to pass along to the police and uh, you know we'll see what happens there. Uh, the next case is uh, Jamie Klotz. I uh, missed the mark there on uh, most items. I felt okay about my description of the uh, murderer. Uh, I said he was 19, uh, tall, dark hair, uh, irrational, obsessive, compulsive type person. Um, Patterson, the murderer, um, uh, is 21, dark hair. Um, I had him had it, him having longer hair, but apparently he did before, just before the uh, assault. And um, <clears throat> I also had that there may have been an accomplice, which I was totally wrong about. And uh, most important was I saw uh, ja that Jamie was uh, deceased, and. Uh, that is not due to a wrong vision, but it was uh, due to a wrong interpretation of, of what I saw. So I uh, missed the mark pretty much on, on Jamie Kloss, and I'm glad I did because she's so alive and uh, recuperating. Um, Kanika Jenkins. That has raised more interest than I really expected because, as I said during the... Uh, uh, reading uh, it does it what I said did not match or did not make logical sense based on what the police police said um, and I'm hearing from many many people um, about this case because apparently what the police gave the media is not accurate by any means and uh, <clears throat> so what I had to say about her being assaulted and I gave the description of that person, <clears throat> then uh, uh, they uh, should pursue it. It would be very easy to uh, find out uh, who was on the payroll in the kitchen staff when 
uh, before she was abducted and who left shortly after and who fits the description that I mentioned. So uh, they can check on that. But I, I was surprised at the, uh, at the feedback I got and I appreciate that feedback. And then the other Chicago lady, Kiera Coles, um, I, I th uh, think I read just recently that the police do suspect the boyfriend. And I, pen, I pointed out that it's likely the boyfriend or a very good friend. I, I also indicated the um, uh, site of the crime, which the police may not know, which is important. And I gave a good indication of uh, where the body would be. It's not in a wooded area where everyone's been looking. It is in water. Uh, and they need to look around the Chicago area in the reservoirs and to find her. So uh, it remains to be seen uh, what's going on uh, there. Um, the police seem to be stalled out on this for some reason. I'm sure they've got to have plenty of evidence before they can make any arrest. So thank you for the feedback on, on that one. It's uh, um, very good to hear from everyone. And uh, once again, I'll just repeat it here is that um, when I read an article to get locked in on a case, that article may not be absolutely, totally factual. It, it, they may assume things or may indicate things that turn out not to be factual. That doesn't really matter with me that much. I just need to get locked in on the, uh, the, the person, the missing person or the dead person uh, to, to get what I need. So I know I've been corrected a lot and said, well, you're not, you know, you're not right on that. You, you don't know anything about the case or you're wrong about the case. I don't really care too much about if I'm absolutely perfect on every item of that case, I just want it lock enough to lock in. Um, the next is Samantha Sayers, uh, Washington State, missing, going to um, going hiking, um, and um, I have uh, we have located um, a suspect. A suspect fits every piece of the description that I've given. He uh, also a hiker, also has um, uh, hiked that peak uh, several times. Um, only the police know whether he was up there that day or not. Everything else fits, falls into place. I have name, address, um, picture, and everything that's going to, the, going to the police. Also, I heard from uh, her mother, and she's uh, uh, upset that uh, we call it a murder. Uh, she says the police are actively looking for her and hopefully will find her uh, alive and well and as we do. So it is a missing persons case and not a murder case. Uh, but we do have this suspect which will be passed along thanks to a, um, a viewer uh, in that area. And then the last one is uh, Missy Beavers which is, I think, maybe the, uh, one of the most interesting cases I've worked on. Uh, it's over, I think, two years old, Missy Beavers in Midlothian, Texas. And uh, <clears throat> she was bludgeoned to death b before uh, one of her uh, exercise classes early one morning. And uh, I indicated that um, I saw um, a gray-haired woman, uh, and I linked that woman to the man Missy was having an affair with. It's either his mother or his mother-in-law. Now, a viewer uh, that lives in that community uh, wrote me and said that everyone knows um, uh, who Missy was having an affair with. Um, and she sent me the, uh, a picture of this man's mother-in-law, who is uh, 62 years old, same age that I mentioned, gray hair, and very physically fit. So that information uh, will be also passed on uh, to the police to uh, help them zero in on a, a suspect because it, it's just uh, baffling to me that, uh, um, that they haven't arrested anyone yet. 
So there's sort of the reviews, updates. We've had uh, a lot. I have had a lot of response from a lot of people, and it's really most of them really sincere, really honest. And uh, I hope uh, after I get off a of vacation, about a week and a half, we'll uh, look at another mystery and maybe update you on uh, some of these um, cases that we mentioned today. Thank you for joining me. Bye.